Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. I finally got around to getting some upgrades and such that I wanted to do on the mill. Uh, and one of those things that I wanted to do was put some form of digital readout on the quill. I've never quite trusted that little hand wheel on the, uh, on the down feed. And uh, so we'll, uh, we'll step through that later on the video. Um, as well, uh, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody who did... Uh, you know, send fun comments and send their names in, and uh, it's uh, it's just really neat to see who's all wanting to come hang out in my shop. Well, I've got a pile of names in for the draw for the digital calipers and the uh, dial indicator. What I've done is uh, taken all the names and printed them out on my laser printer in a nice big font, so you'll be able to see them. So, as far as a drum roll, I don't really have any, a drum to roll. As you can tell, I'm just sifting them through and then grab, say, that one. Set that aside. Peter Uhurik. Congratulations, Peter. You, uh... I'll, I'll need to email and get your address. I know you're over in Eastern Europe. I'll get your address and then uh, we'll get we'll get it shipped off to you. Thanks everybody for putting your names in. Uh, anybody who put their names in on this draw, if I reach a thousand, your name will be in for next time. One of the things I've been meaning to do for a while with this mill is uh, put some form of digital readout on the quill because as you bring the quill down, um, it's uh, you don't really I don't really have any way to measure how far down the quill is going and even with the graduated collar because if I tighten down this knob I can use the graduated collar to raise and lower the uh, the quill itself problem is I don't trust this sleeve and it's actually slipped on me a couple times and I again I don't really trust the graduations on it uh, I wanted some form of more direct read and I also don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on a digital readout system that I can't really afford right now. So, um, what, I was, uh, what I did a while back, and this is actually before I even started videoing stuff, is um, I, I, <laughs> you may have noticed that the front of the mill has been open for most, most of the videos. Well, that's because it's been open for quite a while. I removed the front cover that was here before uh, so that I could get in there. Um, inside here was actually a, a pretty much like a type of nut that worked on a threaded rod that was the depth stop. Well, problem with that was that depth stop uh, thread had about oh at least uh, three thirty seconds worth of uh, worth of play side to side, and you're not going to be able to make any sort of digital system last very long if the bottom piece can rotate in relation to the top piece. So uh, what I wound up doing was getting rid of that and machine this little bar that fit inside this bushing that's in the, uh, in the casting. And so now the bottom doesn't move. As far as, the, um, as far as this little bolt here it is concerned, it's holding the bottom of that rod in place. And so that creates a nice little spot where if I have to, I'll use a slightly longer bolt and a nut to attach my digital caliper on the bottom. This is what I want to do, kind of like what Mark Liquid used um, on his. And just sort of set it up like that. The uh, front cover here, though, I'm going to have to make. I uh, have a bunch of scrap aluminum kicking around. Um, and then uh, there are four holes to either side. Uh, use those as the mounting points. And uh, I'll probably just mount the uh, fixed jaw or the fixed position jaw of the caliper to, to the cover itself. I actually got some decent footage and even just the first little bit of this video as far as explanation of what was going on and I pushed the wrong button on the camera and it erased everything. All I wanted it to re erase was one, uh, one clip and it somehow erased the whole thing. I must have pushed the wrong thing. The little buttons on the screen as you push them, uh, the one must have been a little too close to the other and I didn't realize it and I erased a good chunk of the footage. I hope I still have the last project I was working on, but that's whatever, that's life. Anyway, first practice, first practice piece, blech. But over time, 
got a little bit better and you can tell which were my earlier beads on this thing and which were the later ones so I mean yeah anyway um, I'm gonna go after it with a uh, I'm gonna go after it with an abrasive anyway and clean up the outer edges with all the globs and stuff I just want to blend it into the uh, blend it in the contour a little bit better make it look a little nicer again I don't make a living as a welder I just do this to put my own stuff together Well, <clears throat> considering the fact I don't have a metal break, this is about as good as I'm going to get. Um, again, the welds were kind of ugly before, but uh, taken down a little bit with a uh, with a sander, smoothed off, blended in. That's about as think about as good as I'm going to get. Now we see how this thing fits. Nice. Yeah, that'll work just fine. Get it up above that little ledge. Yeah, that nut inside isn't interfering with the cover at all. Pretty flat on the front. I think that's a success so far. But to line up square to the table and to this uh, spindle uh, travel, I'm just using a uh, height gauge. This will be as uh, close as I can get or close enough. And I just went up against the front of the cover here, so I'm. Um, square going this way. What I've been thinking is drill a small hole here, a quarter inch hole so that it sits about like so, and then making a small sheet metal bracket uh, attached to here that comes down to grab to the other jaw. These uh, points on the back side will just be cut off. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And uh, so again as far as lining up <coughs> vertically so I can align everything and it doesn't get damaged, we'll use the uh, uh, we'll use the height gauge as a uh, as our square. Now I know that the uh, blade here on the cheap import calipers say stainless and hardened. Truthfully, I have my doubts. So let's see where this goes. Again, for how much they cost, I'm really not feeling too bad about uh, drilling into them and modifying them. Well, that was drilling remarkably easily for supposedly hardened stainless. I found a small socket head cap screw that uh, fits through the hole. It has enough thread length that I can spin it in the hole. It will have enough thread length to engage the uh, stop pin that's there, the one I made. And yet, still have enough room for a nut on the back side to tighten up against it. Mount there kind of like a stud. There, that's going to be it. So that's where, we, that's where we're going to want it to sit. For the bracket over here, I have... I have a piece of a little bit thicker uh, aluminum plate. It's about an eighth of an inch. I'm just going to draw it on here. And I hear my son's waking up from his nap. So I will have to go to attend to him. But that's the, that's the basic idea there. I'll cut this out, transfer that to here, cut the shape out of here, and then mount this little bracket to the front cover. So we've got the two holes drilled, a washer under the head of each, and a nylock nut on the back. And with a little bit of cleanup on the uh, smaller belt sander to clean up the rough edges, I think I can finally assemble this thing. Well, 
that is pretty much that. I'm trying to get as much as I can in the frame, considering the fact that it's uh, a wide sc wider screen than it is tall. Uh, I have the uh, cal well readout, if you will. I now have the readout zeroed, and I have the uh, dial indicator on the bottom zeroed. It's a two-inch dial indicator. Okay, there's zero. Zero on there. Okay. Zero on the collar, zero on the scale, zero on the indicator. Let's go 50 thousandths. 50 thousandths on the indicator. The scale says 50. Well, the uh, about 50 and a half on the scale, about 50 and a half on the dial or on the knob. 100 and a half. Oh, ha! There we go. The, di the dial up top here says. Uh, well, it's on the two thousandths ticks. So that'd be like something like a hundred and two thousandths. Let's go down another hundred thousandths. There we go. It says four thousandths on the. It says four thousandths on this dial uh, where the hand crank is. I have two hundred thousandths in a on the uh, well two hundred and a half and two hundred there. Three hundred, yeah, and now I have almost five and a half thousandths extra on this dial up top. That makes so much more sense. I was getting weird, uh, weird measurements as I was cutting, so yeah. Well, that makes a lot more sense as to why I was having issues hitting hitting depth with uh, with my cuts. So I knew I I was having trouble trying to trust that knob, but now I don't need to. Well, that makes me uh, quite tickled. Is it the greatest? No, but it's certainly better than what I had. Once again, I just want to say thanks to everybody who uh, has subscribed. Thanks to everybody who, even if you're not subscribing, but just come hang out on the channel and make comments and uh, you know constructive criticism, that sort of stuff. That's totally cool. Um, thank you to uh, everybody who put your names in for the draw. It's uh, with, without people putting their names and you don't have a draw, so I, I find it fun. And uh, yeah, congratulations again, Peter. Uh, otherwise, yeah, until next time, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Ho hope you're all doing well.